Another one of the questions that I've been receiving a whole lot of asking me how much does this solar shed really produce? So I thought what would be a really good idea is to take you on a little tour of my home assistant and show you the last 20 or 30 days of my production. So in this review, um, today it is raining outside, so we have absolutely no production almost. But we are going to look at an unedited version of the last 30 days and see where it goes. All right, so here we are in Home Assistant. And you'll notice in, in Home Assistant that we um, have a whole bunch of different PV stuff. I mainly use it for a little bit of automation of turning lights on and stuff in the house. Uh, or the RV, I guess it is. But for this purposes today, uh, most of the most of the use that I have for this is all based around the solar or the PV system. Now you can see that I have two or three different feeds here. PV1 and PV2 are the 10 solar panels that are on the roof. So those, you'll see them mixed in some of these stats, but I'll show you how to distinguish the difference. And then PV3 is the Victron device, which is the solar shed, or when I'm traveling, it is the portable panels that I may take with me to uh, provide extra um, temporary power as opposed to being plugged in here at home with the panels. So. Let's just start by taking a look at the history of the Victron device. Now, this has the last 30 days on it, and I use this to kind of go back and see. And as you can see today, we're sitting at 3,200 watt hours or 3.2 kilowatts uh, hours. The, uh, it's still at 494 minutes of in bulk. So it's been in bulk all day and it was in bulk all day yesterday and bulk all day the day before. It's been a few days, probably four or five since I've been at 100%. We've had a lot of rainy weather, um, cloudy weather and stuff like that with the storms blowing through around the country. So every time one of those come through, Florida catches a lot of the, the, the wind and the um, and the clouds blowing over. So no big deal. Uh, that's why we have the 30 kilowatts of battery power in the RV. So yesterday we were at 5.6 kilowatt hours and two days ago we were at 6.3. Uh, 6.7 or 6.8 was three days ago. 6.7, 6.6 as you can see here. Uh, it looks like the last time I actually got up into the sevens was six days ago, almost a week ago. Uh, today is Sunday, so that would have been last week on Monday of last week, it looks like. Um, Sunday last week, we had rain again. Um, then we go back six, seven, five point nine, five point five, seven point two for almost two weeks ago. Uh, 7.2. Here we had a big string of 7.1, 7.2, 7.5, 6.5, 5.9. Uh, this just continues on all the way through. We had a nice string here earlier in the month with 7.5 and 7.4. Now you can see on a lot of these though, the um, where I hit the full charge. So a lot of these are really cut off. Like here I only got 6.2. But you can also see that I had the absorption for 20 minutes. I only do about 20 minutes of absorption. My batteries are, stay really well balanced, so I don't worry about it too much. Um, and then the in-float uh, was for 108 hours. So I spent almost two hours in float uh, before the end of the day. So many times these numbers are less than seven, but a lot of that is not because we don't have the sun or the ability to support it. Now keep in mind, there are 3,000 watts of panels on that shed. And they don't all face the sun all the time, but they do allow for us to collect quite a bit of, of rays during the day, especially this time of year where I have, you know, 800, 900 minutes of, uh, here I had 800 minutes of solar time, which is just an, an enormous amount of hours. Um, I mean, we're looking at over 10 hours of, of time. Now, keep in mind, this starts tracking in bulk time starts tracking about 30 minutes before the sun comes up in the morning as the light gets high enough for this voltage to get up over the 65 or about 60. And then, you know, that's about one watt and then it runs all day. Now we can take a look at that also. Uh, I'll just scroll through the last few days here, 5.8, and 6.1. Now, if we go over to the solar chart, we can actually look at the uh, solar production for this is the last, I don't know, last 12, 14, 18 hours. 
but I can just take like the rest of this whole month and pull it up here on this chart. And as you can see, we we peak out usually around 1.2. There's an occasional day where it'll it'll stretch up into the higher you know, uh, higher zones of 1.5 or so. But for the most part, we end up peaking about 1.2, 1.3 kilowatts. You run that for a few hours and it doesn't take long to get to seven. These panels at one point were laid on the ground. Um, I don't have a picture of it. Maybe I'll insert it on, on post editing. Uh, a picture of these panels laying on the ground. And at that point, I was getting 14 to 1800 watts of power from them. Uh, but I was not, I'm not allowed to do that anymore, so I have to keep them uh, to. So as you can ch see, it's quite easy for me to get the, the claimed solar uh, uh, power. Five to six on, on uh, even three or four on a shady day five to six very regularly and seven or eight. Um, I haven't seen an eight in quite a while. There hasn't been that much sun, but I did get a couple when I first started doing it. Unfortunately, the Victron device only keeps the, the last 30 days, so I can't show you those. But I do get up into the seven fives, the seven twos quite frequently. And that's it. That's it for the solar um, history. I hope that helps and shows you kind of what the real production looks like. And we'll see you on the next one.